Our recording is just it's an already uh, discussed topic only. We have created data on that day, yes, so to record. Earlier videos are up. already there, right? Like. Yeah, yeah, it's already there. Okay, so this is our orders table, which is looking yes. nice. Yes. And this is our users table, which is also looking nice. Yes. And this is, and then user, and then third is products. Okay. Products. Products. Okay. Cool. This is also nice. Right. Now there are something that we require. There are multiple queries that we will see how it works. But there are some basic queries that one should know. And today's class will also be based on just showing you. I mean, what is required for which thing, right? Because we are okay. we are able to see this data right now, right? These three tables. Yeah. Now yes. we we will require multiple items from these tables. Sometimes okay. we will require a data from a single table. Sometimes we might require data from different tables, and okay. there might be a chance that um, sometimes we require data from different tables, but from the third table we require the data again. And okay. we will see. I mean, we are not going to dive deep, but we will see okay. how we check the number of data that we are getting from a specific table. I mean, how much time it's it's taking right now, and what's the internal logic the database is using, right? So, okay. see the very basic item. If I want to know that how much in that okay i want to like see select a star from public user is just normal query right if yeah normal query, we are doing nothing we are just uh, want to see all the database records that we have in our system right and yes. when i use this terminal then i get the number of rows that is it there it is returning right yeah but right now if i want that i i just require just number of rows i don't want data and why yeah. i want only data right I mean, when yeah. I am doing this also, then also I am getting six rows, right? Yeah, yes, yes. But I am this counts the asterisk uh, over here. We are just writing asterisk, right? So yes, it yes. means give uh, me RDMS is relational database management system, right? Yes. And we are doing we are learning RDMS. So relational database management system follows the ACID properties. We haven't discussed this regard until yeah. now. But yeah. I am I am I am sure that you must have heard of it somewhere, right? As yes, properties yes. is something we will dive deep into that because that's the thing yeah. that a developer should know. At least a good developer should know. So yes, as yes. properties and the cap theorem. We are not going to cover the cap theorem because it's a part of NoSQL database, right? So we are just over here to know about the RDMS only because we are using Hibernate in Spring. So over there we are just going to use the annotations and we are not going to dive deep into the database part because we are doing that right now. Okay. So the thing is with RDMS. RDMS is relation database, and the relation is saved in terms of rows, right? Yes. So asterisk means give me everything, and because it is RDMS, so everything will be give me everything from the table. Table. This is table, okay. and uh -huh. we are not writing table before because it's not a DDL query, right? Yes. It's a DML query. So give me everything from this particular thing, right? And yes. it's not like that. It should be a table only. It can be a sequence, or a view, or a view. Not great. See, yeah. it can be a view or a table or a uh, sequence. Sequence. So, give me everything from whatever I am writing over here, right? So, yes. asterisk is asterisk means give me everything and what a table, table view or asterisk. I mean, in RDMS, everything is saved in the terms of rows. So rows. that's why when yes. we say give me everything, that RDMS saves everything in base in terms of rows. So we get number of rows only, right? So yes. right now, when I say give me everything, I get rows, right? I get this yes. in number of rows. But when I'll say the command, let me just copy and paste this instead of writing yes. one. Just let me copy paste this, right? Copy paste, same answer, right? And yeah. I'll, but I'll say that I'll say okay when you are giving me everything and that is rows, right? Yeah. So asterisk means give me every row, right? In from yeah. public yeah. users. So right yes. now I'm saying okay, don't give me every row, just give me data, give me the number yeah. of rows that you are going to return me. Right. Yeah. And why? Why this? I'm saying that. Okay, give me just number of rows you are going to return me. The reason for this, I mean, this thing is also doing right. This thing is also working fine. I can count then. I can count. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. five, six rows are there, right? Not over here. Uh, ID is created by us. Now this thing can be different. We need to count. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, six rows are there, right? Yes. So it's not like we are not want to compute thing because it's it's a very less operation. Right. Com counting yeah. one to n, it's an n operation and it's cool with the backend systems. But the thing yeah. is, the main issue is with this data, when we only want the number of rows or the number of data we have in our system or the number of users we have in our system. So the issue is we will get a lot of data that will travel over the network. Yeah. Right. 
So, okay. yeah. How the system flows? I mean, why? I'm just telling you why this count count query is required. The thing is, over here is the user, right? And yeah. over here is your server. Yeah. And then you have your database. Cool. Yes. So what happens that when your user creates a query and hit to the server, and then server hits to the database, right? So your server yeah. is responsible to process data, right? Yeah. And yeah. And user, what user do? It generate request. Right. Yeah. It generate request, and process data is the task of server and database provides data, right? Data provides data, right? Database yes. is used to provide data only. Then what happens? That if this database will give you some data and it will give the data used with via. Okay, cool. Again, I think okay. When I try to talk, my this is my server, right? Yes. When yes. I'm trying to talk to my server, then what's happening behind the scene? How it, how they are communicating? Yeah. Or how this user is communicating to the server? Yeah. Uh, generally, from the application, we will raise the request, bro. Uh, request, yes. and uh, the server will uh, uh, receive the request, and it will transfer to database. And very, and it very, will... very great. But but remove the uh, forget about the database right now. Okay. Let's, yeah. Let's forget the database also. Or yeah. just just re forget the user also, right? Because we are doing things with the okay. database. Because we are going to cover that part in Spring Boot course. Yeah. Okay. So right now, right now, see how how they will communicate from your server. Whether you use Hibernate or you use JDBC, you will yeah. you will give some queries right to the database. Yes. And then how will it, and then database will give you some data back, right? How this thing is possible? I mean, what's the thing behind behind the scenes? What's the thing that is happening? Based on our queries. Uh... Okay, how your query is going from your server? See, your server is having some different domain name, right? Yeah. yeah there okay. might be a chance your server is in the Mumbai region and your database is in the Pune region, right? Yeah. Okay. And let's say Hyderabad. This is in the Pune region database and server is in Hyderabad region, right? Yeah. So yeah. Server will call to your database in the pune region right from hyderabad to the pune the one request will go right yes so it's not like they are connected they are database is also a server that's why you must yeah, yeah. the database server is written right yeah yes and when when i am doing this thing when i i, I try to log in, in my database server is always active my, yeah, yeah. my local system that's why when i write psql minus u user uh, it, yeah, yeah. It, it takes a request right directly so yeah. what happens when i write psql minus u and users or what happens when i uh, i will hit this thing Yes. It will be converted into. It will be serialized and converted into the binary format, right? Yeah. But before that, what will happen? That this thing, this server, will try to connect a TCP connection with the database. You must have heard of TCP. No, no. Okay, okay. Transfer control protocol. Are yar. TCP, okay. Not from IT, right? Again. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean, it's not like. Everyone is aware of these things, but the thing is, if you were from the IT background, it will be way easier to you to know to uh, yeah. to understand. So again, we are yeah. not going to dive deep into the TCP protocol. It's like, and it's not even important. It's like you know the super deep item how the things are working internally. So and not super deep, average deep. Okay, so the thing is, the server will talk to the database, right? Yes. But first, I mean, they. In, I mean, the database required very. What, what's the best, very first thing? What are the things that we discuss in the very first class? Why we require database, right? Database management yes. system. DBMS, RDMS is relation database management system, but it is some data D, DMS, right? Database management system. NoSQL yeah. is also a database management system. So, yeah. uh, uh, every DMS, every database management systems require authentication, right? We yes. when we talked uh, in the very first class when we were giving a, when I was giving an overview that why we require database management system. Then over yeah. here we find a thing, right? That anyone can come and read my file, whatever I'm yes. file, and everyone yeah. can update it, right? So yes. I need some constraint that some user can only view and some user can only update. So those things yes. also we'll see in the later classes how we can achieve that. But the thing that I am doing authentication versus authorization, you are all already aware of those answer, right? Yes. So yes. the first thing I we, I need to do is the authentication, right? Yes. And for authentication also I need to transfer data, right? Yeah, yeah. So before that, what's what's required? It's the it's a setup of 
IP addresses, right? That I should have my IP address correct, right? Yes, yes. So the database will have some the server database server should be up and running, right? One requirement. Then the yes. server should be up and running, right? Second requirement. These two yeah. things should be up and running properly. Yes. And then the server should have the address of the database, right? Whether it's okay. an IP address or direct, if if I mean DNS name, whatever it has, then both will work, right? Whether it's a domain yes. or not, anything will work. Then this server will hit the database and will say that hi database server, I write, write this server. Okay, it's also called server to server call. Yeah, okay. So this server, what will happen? This my server, uh, let's say any, it's it's a microservice one. My microservice one will hit the database server, right? And it must yeah. have the database location, right? Yeah. So. And then what will happen? Then when my database, when my server will have the database location, it will. And then for authentication, authentication is required, right? Otherwise, it won't be able to get any data. Yes. So yes. When my database hits the makes a query to the database server. First thing is that it should have the data that where I need to hit the query, right? There might be a hundred servers, right? 100, yes. Yes. I mean, hundred thousands of servers should be out there, and out of which we should know, right? Where we need to make a query. And post yeah. making a query, then we will handshake because this server needs to pass data, right, for authentication. Yes, yes. And I do PS, my, PSQL and then minus UN user. After that, I and a Postgres I also write, right. So the name of uh, the Postgres is the name of my user. So I'm passing yes. the data, right, by using the queries. So that data yes. to pass, one needs to have a connection, TCP connection. So TCP okay. is a protocol where we handshake and then do items and it's a three way protocol and all those things. We're not going to dive deep into that. But what happened internally is this server should have the address of this server and then okay. it will sh uh, make connection to that in TCP. TCP port is uh, opened and it will no. remain open until the this server hits the uh, until one of the one of the servers cl uh, closes the connection and when when it, the connection can be closed. First thing is that this server needs to send a data, right? To transfer data, yes. TCP connection is required. Yes. Very less protocols are there to transfer uh, the data, TCP, UDP, and there are a few more. So I'm not going to dive deep into that right now. So what happens to transfer data, TCP is required, right? For TCP, yes. one needs the address. So the server yes. will send the, okay, there is an address that I have. I, I want to make a TCP connection. Then the database will respond, okay, cool. Let, let's handshake. So there's a terminology of handshake. Then yeah. they will handshake and then the server knows, okay, server will tell, okay, I want to send data. Okay. And then this will say, okay, let's handshake. Then the require, request will go over here. Then the server will start passing the data, right? And to close okay. the TCP connection, one needs to close the data, right? Whether either will be, it's a server and whether it will be a database, right? Yeah. And now, again, some things that one requires. We will, okay, so today we are just going to <laughs> talk about this only. So what okay. will happen? This thing is important because the thing is, you will see what, what I was doing over here, right? In a few yes. minutes earlier, what I was doing over here was the same thing. I was opening, I was uh, making sure that my server time is high, right? Okay, let okay. me show you the give. Uh, okay, shit, um, error I have. Earlier, the error that I got was that my server closed the connection. What okay. was happening that there was my one server and instead of database server, it can be a normal server as well, right? So this was my company server that my local system was acting as a server, right? And then th this was okay. the company server. So company server did not respond till 30 seconds. So I have okay. written it after if, if this server does, if this server two does not respond within 30 seconds, then close the connection on your own, right? Cause okay. there's a limit. Cause this is a hardware limit that we have in opening the connection. So I won't be waiting for eternity, right? If, if it not res going to respond to me. So that's why I have set some limit that, okay, after 30 seconds, I'm going to close the connection if you are not going to respond to me. So this thing happens. Okay. This is called timeout connection. And I mean, this is again, three things that one should know. WebSocket connection time is another thing. And the read timeout is another thing. And connection timeout is another thing. That connection, if if this server is, is not providing me connection, then I will disconnect. If I'm not able to read the data, if I'm not, not going to get the data for reading from this particular server till the 30 second, then I will connect, close the connection, right? So okay. if we are closing the connection, so anyone can connect, close the connection, right? This server also and this this server also, both can connect, okay. right? Any one of them okay. can disconnect okay. the TCP connection. Now what happens? Okay. Database also has the same thing. Database okay. also has the timeout time. 
So one okay. thing is that if server open the connection and is not sending the query, then also I can close the connection after twenty seconds or thirty seconds, right? Another Achha, okay. thing that if the query is taking a lot, and but the thing with this is that if you are going to close the connection within twenty seconds, right? <laughs> and your query, I mean, let's suppose that your database is going to close the connection. Database server is going to close the connection in twenty okay. seconds, right? And okay. suppose your server sends the request within one second, right, of creating the query, right? Yes, yes. And when I'm saying one second, it's that that when the database will say, "Okay, I'm ready to take data from you," then this will create the, some query, right? The Hibernate will convert the query into the SQL and then use the TCP connection and then try to send the data, right? And yes. it will travel from India to some other place. So it's going to take one 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 second or a little more than that second. So the network travel time, it's called the network travel time. Because you are okay. in India and you are trying to get the data, and the server is in Singapore, then yeah. you are going to travel from Singapore and come back, right? This is called travel yes. travel time. So okay. now what will happen? That this this cost of sending data. Let's suppose this is one second, right? So mm-hmm. how much time I have now? I have nineteen seconds, right? Nineteen seconds. And nineteen seconds I have to compute the data from the database and then send it also. Mm-hmm. Now remember the thing: send it also, right? Yeah. So we now I have left with nineteen second, and yeah. in twenty seconds I will close the connection. And let's suppose our query is way too large to create. I need to yes. join three to four tables, and then I need to uh, search in the in where queries I have a, a lot of filters that I will put. So just to create the joins between four tables, it's it it requires forty seconds, right? Yes, then, yes. Then we are not we are not going to. Send the data back, right? Because in twenty seconds yes. I'm going to close the connection, and after yes. receiving the query, I have only nineteen seconds, right? Yes. So that's why sometimes we are not able to use the joins because it takes too much time to join the table, okay. especially okay. if they are very large tables, right? Okay. And the other thing is, the thing that we are talking right now. The other thing will be that if let's suppose if my database, nineteen seconds are left, right? And then yeah. let's suppose then only two seconds are left, and because. Nineteen minus seventeen because seventeen seconds, seventeen seconds, seventeen seconds required to get data. Okay. Required to get data, right? Yes. To get data. So now, if my query takes seventeen seconds to get data, and only two seconds left, right? In in that part, two seconds, the network is going to get closed, right? So yes. in that two seconds, I need to transfer data back. I need to make sure that I transfer that data within two seconds, right? Yes. If the data is very less, I will yes. be able to transfer it, right? Na- yeah. Easily. But if the data is way too large and it requires yeah. 10 to 20 seconds to get transported, yes. Then again, my query will fail, right? Because the yes. server will not not process the data until it gets all the data. It's yes. not like if I get if I require 100 rows and And the ten rows, twenty rows has been transported. Then it's not going yeah. to do that. Internally, yeah. again, what happens? Uh, the computer does not know what is the string, right? Because a string in Java is different. A string in database is different, right? Oh yeah. So a string in Java take can take a lot of data, and a string in database we mentioned that okay, please take two fifty five characters and X Y Z, right? And default is also two fifty five. Yeah. Okay. So one question for you: How much a string? How much? Data can a string hold in Java, okay? And it's not like infinity, because it will give you an error of a string too large. It will yes. give you an error. That's why we need to read if the file is too large. We need to read it from JSON file, okay? And yeah. That's why, and there are different buffers. Okay, we're not going to dive deep into that also. So the thing is, yeah. we just got we just know that okay, the string in database uh, sorry string in the Java can take a lot of larger data size than in the database, right? Because the default is 255 in the database, right? 255, sir. 255 characters is the default. If you don't write, if you just write in the Postgres, especially, or in MySQL yeah. as well, if you if you just write the varchar, then the default value would be 255. 255 characters is the default. Okay. String length. We cannot give n string length, right? Because yeah. again, we are not going to dive deep into that. What happens when we create a data, we, uh, create a row in the database whenever we define a schema? that okay. particular space is not going to be filled so okay. let's let's suppose if in java you take a uh, character of if you take an integer integer takes four bytes in java right yeah but if you save only one in that string right yeah what in java a four byte integer can hold 
टू टू हंड्रेड फोर्टीन करोड़ सेवेंटी लैक समथिंग वैल्यू राइट यस बट इफ यू सेव टू हंड्रेड फोर्टीन करोड़ देन ऑल्सो फोर वाइट विल भी कंज्यूम इफ यू सेव ओनली वन देन ऑल्सो फोर वाइट विल भी कंज्यूम राइट फोर वाइट इज ऑक्यूपाइड yeah so the thing is that's why if you fill any data into the database or you do not fill the data into that particular column that that 255 character space will be reserved because reserved. there might be a chance in future you want to update that particular data yeah yeah so you cannot give a infinity space right to this yes. especially in rdms there is a anomaly json b is a column where something different happens again we are not going to dive deep into that but yeah database will work in this way and in json b also it, it does not do anything new it just like in the heap space whenever a variable is pointing to the heap space it does not check into the stack memory it just goes directly into the heap area to find the uh, particular object right so that yeah. thing it replicates into the database as well instead of leaving space for a particular data type what it do it just leave the space for the reference and okay. then whenever we try to access that particular thing it goes to that reference of that object and it fetch it from there okay if you are not able to get what i have just told you right now yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah. i am able cool i mean there are how many types of memory is there in java uh we have stack memory heap nice. memory and uh, method area um, uh, cool live not method area so stack okay stack, me- stack heap. memory heap and let's say right now non heap right non heap just non heap Just take three. Then there is string constant pool, and there are other memories as well. But we are not type. We are not going to take that. The basic categories are only three, right? Because yeah. SCP and other type of memory are the specialized memory that are only there just to take care of a particular thing, right? Like SCP okay. string constant pool is just for the string literals, which are yeah. created without, which are created without using the new keyword, right? Yeah. The basic these three are there. Again, yeah. when we are talking about stack, which variable in Java are stored in stack? How many types of variable in there in Java? Is there in Java? Yeah, uh, local variables and uh, global variables. Okay, there is no term like global variable in Java. We use uh, class. Variable. Come again. Class variables. No, not even class variables. Instance variables. Nice. And static variables, instance variables, and local variables, right? Local. Three yes. types of Java in in this. I mean, if you have learned yeah. Java, why you are saying this global and this thing? I mean, I've seen a lot of people using this term, but they are from PHP or other C or yeah, yeah. Java. <laughs> okay, because but see, whenever we are talking about yeah. some particular language, then the yeah. uh, the language which whatever the language is, whatever language speaks the terminology, that terminology we should use, right? Yeah. So the language is saying the instance I, variable is not uh, instance variable not able to yeah. get the instance variable or instance area, then we should. Yeah. Talk regarding that only static context area. If the language is saying giving an error of static context area, then if you talk in the same terminology, the first thing is that you will be able to communicate with the wider audience globally, and other thing yeah. is that you will be able to understand and the articles that the people have written, right? Yes, yes. You will go to the online and the documentation, the reading of documentation will also be helpful for you a lot. Because yeah. I follow this thing, whatever the Java says, I just I I I, I just speak. that particular thing if if java is saying okay static context area i will say static context area so what will happen yeah. if i go and try to read the java documentation it will be way too easy for me to understand for things even when i go inside the java documentation also then also it is very easy to understand yeah because yeah. what happens if you don't do this right then there you will find a lot of issues going on again it's not uh okay so see we are inside Uh, okay, string manipulation is there. Right? So let's let's just see string manipulation and the basic creation of string buffer. So yeah. okay, what what's an string? Do you know string? Yeah, string is a class and it will uh, uh, store the values like uh, in tenses like what you can say rather than in double inverted commas. Okay, cool. See how how is it able? What what will be the output of this line? Byte array. Uh, okay, what you say? We and pass it with the very reference. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it will work, it will throw an error, but whatever it is. It will throw an error. It will print. Uh, you are not aware of SCI codes. Which one, sir? SCI codes. 
हां नो नो ओके 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 ये क्या चल गया वेट 7 सेकंड व्हाट इट इज प्रिंटेड आईडी इट विल प्रिंट दैट इंडेक्स रिलेटेड आई हैव जस्ट रिटन एबीसीडी ओवर हियर राइट या 97 इज द एसकेई कोड ओके सो आई यस ओके 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 एंड देन यू आर अवेयर ऑफ एसकेई यू आर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ एसकेई कोड्स सी इट विल इट विल गिव द अल्फाबेटिक वैल्यू सी 97 any image will do let's go and check any image see this is our table of yeah okay cool see this is the thing right so see 90, yes. 97 it was written from 97 right so 97 yeah, is small case a right yeah. and if you plus 26 yeah. then you will get 122 at 122 you will get the z right and if you yeah. go to the 65 then it will the capital a right yes and you will go inside this and it has 127 right Yes. Do you okay? But uh, I mean, uh, how many types of uh, primitive data type is there in Java? Sorry, sir. How many types of primitive data type is there in Java? Ah, uh, we have integer, uh, int, boolean, character, long. These are primitive data types. Okay, that's it. Float. Okay. See again. Dot. When you are giving yeah. answer, right? It it's better if you <laughs> give the answer in in some order. For integers, uh, okay. we use byte, short, integer, and long. Yes. For yeah. decimals, we use float and double. Float and bool. Uh, double. For boolean, we use boolean. Boolean. And boolean. for st- for character, we use single it's character cat. notation, right? Where cat yes. is there, and and a string is not a primitive data type in Java. A string is an object. Yes. Right. So this is how you should answer in your word. <laughs> you are randomly giving data. I mean, I am not able to track what what you have answered or not. Cool. Yes. Okay. Cool. No issues. I will improve, sir. Come again. I will improve from next time. <laughs> okay. I mean, I am not saying that you should improve, but I mean, you can. It it, it will be better for you yes. if you give some data in ordered format, right? But yes. Again, and now the data type. Okay. Which uh, I mean, what the scope of integer? Let's let's talk about integers. So to hold the integers, we have byte, short. integer and long yeah this four data type we have primitive data type in java we have and at least here yeah, if you are <laughs> if you are working at least know how many types of data type is there in java language it is yeah, the yeah, most yeah. mandatory thing it it it's in the very first class first class first minutes <laughs> item yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so yeah. so okay so for integers we have byte short integer and long right so do you yeah, know yeah. about the range of these four uh yeah uh, integer is four bytes Yes. How many uh, have you can hold using four byte? Okay, cool. That no issue. Exactly. No issue. No issue. Exactly. You are not from CSIT. You, you, you. I think you are not. Uh, are you? Can you? Uh, can you get the range from the bytes that the character holds? Do you know the formula how to how to derive the size that a particular? I mean, if if the database is of one byte, if the primitive data type is of one byte, not uh, in the Java. The calculations uh, I have done long back, uh, like. We okay, need cool. to. You are aware of it, right? That it is yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if yeah. if some, if, it's not like in Java only. If if we are giving the four byte, if yeah. some language in Java is taking four byte, then it can hold two crores, two hundred fourteen, two hundred fourteen yeah. lakh and seven, two hundred fourteen crores seventy lakh something. But yes. if PHP is also taking giving four byte to a particular variable and just to store the integer, then that particular Variable or primitive data type in PHP also will be able to hold the same amount of value, right? Yes. Because the computation is same behind the scenes. It's 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 not language dependent. It's it's of computer science. It's not of language dependent. Cool. Yes. So let's. I mean, is there any language that you know? Uh, sorry, any primitive data type you know in integers? Uh, do you know any range? Any range uh. of integer only primitive data type of Java. Okay, if you're not aware, then no issues. <laughs> I mean, we are not doing Java right now. See the range of yeah. this; it is starting from zero, right? Yes. And it is ending at one twenty-seven. All right, it's one twenty-seven over here. Visible? My screen is visible, right? Yeah. Okay. So from zero to one twenty-seven, do we have any data, primitive data type that can hold this much value? Right? We have the byte. Byte is yes. of one uh, eight bits, and eight bits can hold a value of till minus one twenty eight to forty one twenty seven. So that's yes. why 
<laughs> that's why when I s- send the byte, then these things yeah. are converted into SCI values, and the byte is able to uh, is able to handle it because it's it's from zero to one twenty seven only. The values yeah. in, in there will be zero to one twenty seven, right? Yes. Nice. Now, what is a string in Java? I mean, you will string say it's, it's, what is a string in Java? And I mean, a string is a character of array, right? Yes. Okay, cool. But what's the internal implementation of a string in Java? Is it a character of array of characters? Uh, no. What is it then? See, this is a character, a, right? Yes. This is a char, char a, right? And yes. we we say that okay, my bad. And over here, if I do string b equals to, okay, let let's try the show. Oh, okay, okay, I cannot write a show, right? And this is a show, right? Yes. And then I need to double inverted comma plus this string is double, double inverted comma. And then if I do character array, right? C. Yes. And inside that, no char array, right? And inside that, if I'll say that A and then S and then H and then O and then k if i'll say okay k is outside the home yeah it came out okay so these thing right these things are same right i mean a is not same but uh, this and this this and this are same right yes so the internal internally is the ashok is saved in this manner in in the java See, it, there is no string primitive data type, right? Yeah, so yeah. Anything in Java will be stored in eight primitive data types only, right? Whenever, okay. e- even if you are normal object, also if you could try to create a normal st- a student object, a student will okay. have an integer roll number, right? So it will have an integer data type. It will have a name, so a string will be there, right? So, but the string is not a class. String is not a primitive data type. It is a object. Yeah. So I also need to require to use those eight data. If you want to hold any data in the Java, then you need, need to hold the data in byte, short, int, long, float, double, character, or boolean. These are the okay. only eight data types that you can hold data inside the string. Oh, sorry, no, this Java. Okay. So this thing is not getting saved in this way, right? It is, yes. it is getting converted in some other form because this thing does not exist in Java. Okay. So what's the internal implementation of a string? What is a string internally? <coughs> is, is it this? Because character character is in primitive type. Is this the string? Yes, yes. No, it is this in byte. In a string, if you go inside the string and you try to find the value, the string is byte, byte. array, not character array. Byte array, yes. And why byte array? <laughs> I have just shown you because the thing is, in character takes two byte, byte takes one byte okay so byte is more efficient and the okay. another thing is that from the sky values we have seen that the value of the sky values will be range the will, the range of the sky value will be from 0 to 127 right yes and byte is able to hold those values and it is providing one less it is taking one less byte also okay cool cool no issues oh yeah we have again gone in these things here <laughs> No problem, sir. Uh, okay, from next time, I will just write down what I need to teach you because I otherwise our course will not going to get over. <laughs> we just go to these things. Okay, cool. But why we were there? Ah, yeah, okay, I'm even poor anyway. I'm too. Okay, 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 okay. Stack heap, stack heap, and ye, why we were talking about this? I mean, hi. Yeah. Okay, from database and then stack is a okay. seventeen second. Okay, cool. Okay, let's leave this also. I am not even remembering right now why we were talking about these things. So <laughs> let's leave that again. It's going to take a lot of time again if we dive deep into that. So the thing is, when we get the data, right? Okay, okay. Now I remember because I was talking about how it saves the data, right? When JSON B and other columns are used. Yes. No issues. No, not required for you right now. So seventeen seconds. If it takes to compute the seventeen seconds, then the data, if it's a lot huge data, right? 
because again yeah. i'm not going to dive deep how the data transfers from network right so there there should be a network width i mean it depends like there are roads right if you want to send 1000 cars right yeah so if you have 1000 cars and if you have single lane yeah then it's going to take longer time right yes but if you have eight lanes and you want to send 1000 yeah. cars then it will take less time right less time yes so now your network connection how how much uh, how how many with i mean the net i mean your your download speed will be your lanes right how much yeah. how, how much faster you you can consume the data so yeah. if you if the database server and the first thing is that how much faster the car can drive right yes two parameters is required right if if all are f1 cars and you have eight lanes then the data transfer will be very fast but yes. if your server is not able to send data in a very fast manner and your network is also very confined so data is yeah. not passing through very fast then it's going to send the data i mean the data transfer will be will take longer time right yes but let's say the data transfer for 1 1 kb requires 1 second yes then after 17 seconds of uh, fetching data you require you have 10 kb so 10 kb will require we are just assuming the data right 10 kb is there and we take 1 second for transferring 1 t 1 kb and then 2 seconds are not enough right yes and, Eight more seconds are required because ten seconds are required. But we will going to close the connection within the two seconds. Yes. And the server is not going to entertain that half data because it will wait until all the uh, data is there at the server end. Because what the server is receiving in in network, no string, no nothing will access. Right? It's only zero and one. Yes. Network and systems understand only binary. So yeah. the data that we are sending from here will will be going inside this in zero one format, right? So for yeah. only two seconds for two KB of data, it will get from zero one zero one, which will not. I mean, it's not like from ten <laughs> we are sending thousand rows. Then, in two seconds, if let's suppose twenty rows are received over here, it won't be able to de-signalize right. those twenty rows, right? Yeah, yeah. So it it is not possible. So it will throw an error. It's going to throw an error. so just to make sure so the less the data it will be better for us right it will be better yes. for our query to not going to consumed by the, the by i mean it it will not going to be consumed by what the time of database time connection time of right yeah okay so that that's why i'm i was saying that if i'm going to send this much data right yeah and if i'm going to count that thing only right Yeah. So what I'll, I'll I'm going to do the internal implementation was also going to be easy because from one it will just going to count the size of the yeah. index rows that it has. I mean, because primary yeah. key will every time will have a index, right? Yeah. So it will just go and check the size of index and it will return that. Yeah. And it will return only one thing like six. Yeah. Right. So passing this much data into the network and passing only this data into the network, which one yeah. will be faster? Uh, second one, sir. Count. Yes. And right now, what what's happening? We have only six rows, right? But it is never that there are six rows. Because in in yeah, yeah. in Flipkart and all these website, Amazon and Flipkart, four crore daily active users go every day. Okay. So they must be having twenty crore or forty crore user profiles. Yeah. So yeah. if I want how many users and I try to fetch all the forty crore profiles through the network, then it will be hell. It won't be possible. It's not possible. Okay. <coughs> before before passing of all those data my connection will die yeah so this this is why this this is called aggregate functions all right okay so that's yeah. why it is useful i mean it's not just over here we are using and yeah. we have gone through all this issue just to <laughs> just to tell you that this six data is better than this okay. yeah yeah cool so let's see more things so asterisk means give me everything that you have and rdm is only have the row yeah. column right When you say everything, then it will provide you call rows. So yes. Asterisk. This means provide every row that you have in the product table. Yes. This means provide me the count of every row that you have in the. Yeah, every row. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. So let's uh, see. Um. Now, the thing is, we have seen that we can. We want some X Y Z data, right? Every, over here, yes. we are saying that give me everything, right? Yes. But it's not like we want everything every time, right? Yeah. So we. Because the thing is, if you just want email ID, if you want uh, to send the email to the user, yeah, you don't require this thing, right? That what's the phone number of the user? Yeah, you yeah. don't even require the state of the user. Yes, you don't even require that created date of the user. You don't require yes. the. I mean, first name, last name, you can, cause hi Naresh M K or hi Atul Bhaskar. Yeah. So those things can happen, but other things do not, right? Other things yes. are not required. 
So yeah. what we can do is that instead of asterisk, asterisk means select. <coughs> Probably zero. Asterisk means that give me everything, right? Yeah, everything. Yeah. Instead of everything, you can just type down the username also. Give me the sure. first name. First name. First name and email ID. Email. email. Just these two things. Specifically, we mention the column names. Yes. So now, what's happening? Why we are doing this? Again, to preserve the network. Is yes. Yeah. Right. Now we yes. are not sending these data, these data, these data. It is not required. Why should I block my or clog my network, right? Yeah, yeah. So it is better if you try to ask only those data that you require in your query. Other yes. data if not required, then why you are clogging your network area, right? It's yes. Like sending more cars in your yes. single lane <laughs> network. Single lane. Yeah, network. yeah. So this thing is I can get get this thing, right? But the thing is I get the over here I am saying that give me everything, every row that you have. Right now, I'm saying that give me every row, right? This is also yes. every row, but from every row, not every column. This is give me every row, every co every column. Every yeah, column, yes. Public, right? Give me everything that you have in the user table. Yeah. This is everything. Give me everything you have in the user table. Give me only first name and email. First name and email. Yes. From every row that you have in the user table, right? Yes. Now, state is one, two, three, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's let's take an example. That three, only one. Only three. Let if the three is the state of the user which are active, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if I want the username, because if I want to send some some discounted coupon, yeah, I would require the user. I mean, I want to send the email to the user which are active, right? If someone yes. has already deactivated my account, deactivated my Swiggy account, then okay. it won't make sense to send the emails to them, right? Yes. So. Instead, and now, but I I know that I I require only first name and email, right? Yes. These two things only I require. I know this. First name and email from public dot users where yes state is equal to three. Cool. Okay. So now again, what what's happened? First thing is that now we are not sending the data. The one thing yeah. that we could have done is yeah. that because database is a single item. One thing we should know. That database operates the state. We should have done this also, right? Yes, okay, yes. We, we, we could have done this thing. And then we, sh we should have processed this data in our Java system, right? In our Java yes. code, we have written. We could have written that, okay, if the state is yeah. not equal to one, then continue. Don't operate yes. on that particular user, right? Don't send me. Yes. We could have done also this thing also, yeah. right? Yeah. So now you need to find out that, I mean, so what's what's the best thing that you can do? between these two things, right? You need to find yes. out which one can be used. But one thing we know that our data, our server, we can scale. Yes. When I say scale is that if there is a only microservice, microservice we create to make yeah. sure that we can create multiple instances of it, right? In yes. today's age, no single instance of a microservice works. You understand this terminology, right? Instance of single instance, multiple instance. Yes. yes. Cool. So n no one is using a single instance right now in a microservice environment. Microservices are created in such a way that it should be a scalable and we could have, we can scale the machines to n numbers, right? It's not yeah. like we can scale it to 10,000 or one leg and it, yeah. will, it will give more things, right? The thing yes. is one of the network blocks will get clogged. Yes. And what I mean by clogged, if you if your Java machines are one leg, but your database is single, right? Yeah. yeah if yeah. your one leg machines will give you a single query, then your database will have one leg queries in a one second. Yeah. And if we are running Tomcat, Tomcat is having, okay, cool. We, we, we can wait. Uh, uh, okay, we just uh, we just focus on the database part. Yes. So yes. What, what's happening over here is, uh, right now we just search this thing and then, okay, okay, cool, yes. So what happens in our system is we have multiple instances of a server. But the yeah. thing is database instance is only single, right? To scale okay. the database, it, it comes with again a, a lot of difficulties and a lot of constraints that one needs to follow. Okay. So that's why there are multiple things that we can make to make the database faster. So your request that you are creating should yeah. be based on the less consumption of the database resources. Okay. And how you will know that, okay, your query will con be consuming less database resource, right? Yeah. So between these two, which one is better, right? The first thing is it's, I mean, for, for this kind of queries, it's almost all, I mean, every time it's better if you follow this, this type of query, right? Yes. 
because everyone will tell you that okay follow this only because you are not clogging the database and you are not taking extra time to process the data whatever computation database can do you should have you you can let those computation run by the database but if this is a very simple query right yeah that's why this is acceptable right but if it's not like this how will you check whether a query is taking more time or less time right yes. so what company do company will give you good companies good companies will give you a range that your database query will not consume more than 30 milliseconds or 80 or 100 milliseconds right okay. because the thing is everyone wants your system to be faster right yeah yeah because data will require i mean what are the aspects that you can hold i mean you can work on yeah when we when the server hits the when the server will try to send the request to the when the user will from the browser will try to hit the backend server then yeah. the time it's going to travel take to travel from your system to the backend server you cannot work on that right yeah it's yeah. not on your hand as a backend developer so yeah. what's is is in your hand your hand is in the computation time of the java you can write code in less time complexity again yes. the network call the network travel time between the database the server to the backend server to the uh, backend database server so that tra- travel time also you cannot do anything about right but what you yes. can do is the response time of the database and the size of the and how can you do that you, the processing time of the data query and the data size that you are sending that you can yeah. size right because if yes. you want two data then it will make our query faster right to just get the yeah. two columns instead, instead of every column yeah. right okay. yes so yes. these kind of things you do to optimize your database query and it will consume less time for okay. as, as this is the very simple query and this is the very simple query so you are going to work in this way right but the yes. internals we should know how we judge based on this right if let's say your rows are way too large right you have 1 million you have 2 billion or 5 billions of record okay now just to make sure that you are state it 3 it need to check right the linear scanning it will do yes to check whether the state is 3 the yeah linear yeah. scanning won't work with in in this case because 3 billion records if you want to linear scan it's going to take almost minutes 20 30 minutes okay so okay that okay. won't make sense for you right so you yes it, it to be faster so the indexes are the things we will see it later on how indexes will benefit us in this scenarios but okay. how we check whether it's a good or not right if we have yeah, yeah. this six rows right so it's yeah, yeah. it's it's good that if you are going to write in this way right because your java code will be beautiful i mean it it's not going to be a lot of lines to to check right yes but yes. if this if this query this query is good and acceptable if your database is of less size if your database is of 1 or 2 billion or 3 billion of records then without yeah. index this query is not acceptable right but yes. how will we know that how much time it's it's taking right yes so let's let's first do run this query learn this okay. query right and let's see we are going to see explain and the list and then query right and i enter it yeah. see the planning time is 0.3389 millisecond and execution yeah. time is 542 right? okay so and how it's doing how it's comp- computing right now it's filtering row by state equals to 3 what does okay. it means it means that it's going to one by one one by one in the state column it is checking the whether the three number is there or not it is filtering data based on this filter that should a state should be three and how many rows it's written it's it is returning based on this state filter it is returning two yeah, rows, yeah. right two rows. and when i'll i'll just do this thing when i'll just do normal thing see uh, computer timing i mean postgres is not postgres is not created to handle A small database. It is. It is created to handle greater size database, right? Explain and list. Now, when I do this, there is no filter, right? Yes. On the state. Now, see the time. From thirty-three to nine milliseconds, it came down to one zero four milliseconds. One zero four. Yes. And from five forty-two milliseconds, it came down to zero point zero two milliseconds. Milliseconds. Okay. 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 So this query is better, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Of database. If your server, if your database server gets a lot of queries, right? Then yes. This one is better. Uh, this okay. one to get all the data. Because yes. To make to make your to scale your database or especially the RDMS is way too hard. Yeah. But to scale your Java, I mean, is is to, I mean, to to scale your microservices, it's way too easy, right? In in which yes. whatever language you have written it. So yeah. that's the difference, right? Now you understand in which way yes. you can. and do right we we should know how much query how much time our query is taking and based yes. on the 
and even if we have the state as in something if we have one three c when we have the larger data size so it does it right so yeah. right now because the data size is very less we can say okay let's send the six data right we will filter it out on our own yeah yeah but if we have three billion data we cannot do that right yes because if we try to send three billion data in network network will be clogged yes it won't be able to pass the data three billion records it won't be able to send yes because in 20 seconds only it will close the connection right yes so that's why if we know the internals how the things are working then it's easy to for you to understand if i don't made you understand how, how those things are working then these things will be like uh, why why this is happening okay cool yeah okay something is happening okay cool i will i will google it later on okay cool no issues then we have seen that how we can fetch the data and why we fetch the data and in which way we write the query because sometimes what what i have seen that some when i do the code reviews when i say okay this thing will not work then they will say okay i have done in my previous form also and then there, there it was selected and you 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 are you you nitpick everything so these kind of allegations i mean sometimes people put forward but the thing is again over there the data size should be your data size will be very less right 18000 yes. records were there so it was cool but right okay. now we are having 180 million 18 yes. 18000 to 18 crore yeah. There is a huge difference, right? Over there it was working, but you should know the internals. That's why I don't hire people who don't know database. Same okay. thing. Again, I need to teach them everything, this thing. Because they are like, they go and complain to the senior management that <laughs> I am working good, but he is the one. I mean, my performance is low because he takes a lot of time in the code review. <laughs> <laughs> so those kind of things happen. Again, the junior yeah. people do a lot. People with... Uh, uh, okay, let's <laughs> make no comments. But cool, understand right? right? Why one, yeah, yeah. one why one query will work in one company and not in yeah 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 got it got it okay cool so this thing we have seen so we have seen right now two things that we can get all the data but with this bad so we can get the through the network layer we should transfer very less data that we want right. We can yes. only get the data that we require, not not like if we four data, if the rows, if 20 rows are there, if 20 columns are yeah. there in a database, in a table, then we should not yeah. get 20 table, tables, 20 rows. We should only get yeah. the X, Y, Z columns only, right? And oh. this will happen with the Hibernate, because Hibernate will take everything. If you not write a tuple, we will see in later on in our yes. good classes, there is a concept called a tuple, right? In which you can yeah. get the data that you only want. Otherwise, Hibernate yeah. will get entire row for you. Okay. Right. So the and fetching entire row is bad. Then again, you have seen and it's explained to you why this thing is bad. All right. Yeah. Cool. So yes. we have seen the where clause, right? So yeah. When we write the asterisk, we want to give us everything that you have on a table. When we write the particular column, then we are saying in the select area. See one one yes. thing again. This block from public, and then table name. Let's say users then where right yes so and then after where where id where state equals to d, right? right and yeah. we can do order by id order right by the ASC. yes then yes. we can do limit 10 okay yeah so this is how we are getting the data right so one yeah. thing one must know that select area are different okay yeah select column are different it is it is processed differently because this means that how much data i need to select right i'm saying that i need yeah. to select everything so select yeah. area is different again from public users is the same item right then the where area is different where has the filters in it right how yes. i want to filter out the data how i want to yeah. filter uh, how i don't want to uh, i i don't want every row i want to filter it out right to fill where yeah, area yeah. is different right yes group by will also be there so group by area will again be different and then the order by will be different right right now okay. order sorted in reverse order right because i have written reverse please order by in descending right De descending if I don't order by it, then what will happen? The default uh, sorting will order will be ascending. Four plus ascending. Whether I write the ascending, I can write order by ascending as well, order by ASC. But it will just, okay. Error at sending ASC. ASC, D, E, S, C. Oh, okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. Order by ID, I have need to write, right? ASC. Yeah, ready. So whether I write ASC, I write this order by ID ASC or not, it's it will it's still return the data in the sending order. The default order of the returning of data is in yes ascending order, right? Ascending. And order. which ascending order? 
we have multiple multiple data right is it yes, based sir. on the created created data sending order no id yes primary key right because it's going to save the data in the primary key cool okay. we will see that in the index it, it 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 is taking data from the index and it is starting from the starting point that's why it is taking some data from there right so it's it's like okay we are going to cover it in our index classes as well so in this way it is there in index right when you say yeah. we don't provide the order then it is start reading from upwards right upwards yes if we say descending then it will start reading from downwards so downwards it is not going to go from over here to here and then try to limit out okay this and then come back no it's going to read from here and then limit out okay 3 and then 200 return then okay 1 2 3 cool return this data so that's how yeah. it works internally cool okay but only with the data that has the index okay Okay, and over here the primary key will also have index, right? So the yeah. default ordering order will be based on the index and that too ascending order, right? Because it will start reading via ascending order, but it will start reading from the starting point of the index. Mostly we will use order by to primary key only, or else we can use any other call. No, no, no. Order by it depends entirely on your requirement. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You can do the order by by email or first yeah, name. Yeah. First name order by by first name is very common. Yeah. Right, because in a school. What yeah. you do in school, you you order by name, right? Yes, yes, yes. So this is how it it's going to happen. Yeah. But the thing with the school is, <laughs> your non roll number is also ordered by your name, right? Yeah, yeah. Then it will be the same. Whether yes. you order by the name or order by the roll number, it will be the same because your yeah. roll number depends on the your naming order, right? Yes, yes. But your email ID can be different, right? Yeah. Because Nikhila, okay, Nikhili or oh shit, her name is Nikhila. Cool. So the Nikhila. Nikhila can write the email ID as Killer Nikhila, right? Yes. Or yes. or Coder Nikhila. Yeah. So the C will be the first name. So the email ID can be different, but the name and those things will be the same. Yes. All right. Admission date. Let's say the credit date is the admission date of the student. Then we yeah. can order by the admission date. Then the order will be different. So it it ordering is completely dependent on the your business logic. Yes. Yes. Right. Cool. I mean, but but I was trying to tell that every section has a different area, right? Because yes. when we are going to uh, do the subquery, then yeah. where there will be a select subquery, where subquery, okay, and then group by subquery, then do the subquery will be there, right? So that's yeah. why every section are different. It is computed differently, and its work is also different. In select query, we are just selecting the columns that we require, right? Yeah. In in where query, we are we are filtering out. The number of rows that we don't want, or we want, right? right? Yeah, or we want the yes. data we want, and then order whatever the data we get from the where query, whatever the filtered data we get, then yeah. over that filtered data, I will provide the ordering, and the ordering yes. logic we will provide over here, right? And yes. And the amount of data that I get, I will limit over here, right? Right. Yes. And then yes. there is one thing more. Let's suppose instead of uh, ten, yeah, you are saying something. Yeah, here limit means the total number of records that we want to display, right? Okay. See, if I don't write the limit, right? Yeah. Order by first name, then it will be ascending, right? Ascending order yes. will give me the data. Yeah. And let's uh, just for the sake of things, uh, let me remove this whole thing, right? Then this is what the data is. We are getting the data, right? In ascending order, the default ascending, yeah. the default sorting order is yeah. ascending order on the primary key. Mm -hmm. So right now, if I want to limit, I want only two data over here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then what I'll do, I'll do select start from, start public, from data public data users. users. Then I will limit, limit two. two. That as soon as you get the two data, please return. So what does it uh, mean? If it is searching data from index, it is the index, right? So it is starting from one. So it's saying, okay, one data you got, two data you got. Just return it. No further. Yes, yes. So uh, it will it will limit the time to read the data as well, and it will limit the data that I need uh, to transfer in the network, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. And, and this is and what happened if I process two data right now, right? And yeah. if I want next data to get processed, right? Yes, yes. Now I on I want two data only, right? So the limit will be two. Limit the number of rows. When I say the limit, then it means limit the number of rows. So it okay. means limit the number of rows to two. That's the okay. full form of it, right? Limit the number of rows to two. Select everything from the users that you have. But uh, limit the rows to two. This is the answer, right? Yes. But what if yes. I want, I want the data after this two, right? I want two data yes. again, but after this two, then okay. what can I do? This thing I require, right? Yes. But I will say offset two. Then I get okay. three and four, right? 
offset dot. What's the offset to saying? It is saying, okay, I want two data from this table, right? Then you yes. will start from reading one and two, right? Yes. Over here you have read two, and then you will say, okay, let me return. But no, you have written offset as well. Then it will say, okay, you have read two uh, rows, then leave it. Yes. Now start again reading two. Now three, four, it has read. Now it has written. Three. Yeah. So after it means leaving, leaving that two particular rows. Leave, right? Yeah, leaving that two and printing next. Yes. Again, if I do this offset four, then I get the remaining five and six, right? One, two, three, four, five. Last two. Right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And this is the database query that we write when we write the pagination. And this type of pagination yeah, 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 yeah. offset pagination. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. This is the offset pagination. Yeah. When you, if yes, you yes. it, there are multiple types of pagination, seek pagination, yes. offset pagination, hybrid pagination. So this is the offset pagination based on the offset that we have in the database. Cool. All right. Okay. Okay. So, so, okay, cool. So we have multiple, multiple sections in our database. Yes, Select sir. section is a, uh, different from section is different because yes. why I'm saying from section is different because in the from section only you will judge yeah. from where you need to find data right right now we yes. are just fetching data from one table right if we want to table yeah. fetch data from two tables i will update in the from column right from yes. public users right join on uh, customers or whatever table it has products or orders and then i'll, I'll go and fetch the data so those things will happen and right now let's let's end the session today again yeah.